to set the camera up a little bit further away so that you can catch these two small wall hangings hanging behind me. And before I get started on them, welcome to episode 16 of On My Studio Table. I am really enjoying putting together these videos and I think you will find that I'm going to be putting them up a bit more often as I become more confident. Um, I'm not going to say any regular days because I really don't want that pressure but I am enjoying the process so I will be sharing them as and when and sometimes more often than what I was doing before. So these two wall hangings have just come back from the United States to Tasmania. They were part of a challenge that the Quilting Arts magazine ran and um, very grateful that these two were accepted for this challenge. And so they were published along with other entries in their current Quilting Arts magazine, which is the summer issue. That's available now. I also have an article in this magazine, uh, which you might like to look up too. I'm still waiting for my print copy, so I will share that in a video when it arrives. But these two are a little bit unusual because I've combined paper and fabric in these two wall hangings. The paper has been painted with earth paints which I've made myself and as I've mentioned before I uh, make my own paints from the earth around me and also sometimes charcoal from the fire. Then the papers have been fused onto the fabric for strength and then I've stitched through all the layers. And I just used circles, I wanted to experiment with circles and they just reminded me of wellsprings which is why I've given them the name. And living in Australia water is so important. We do have serious droughts in some parts of the country and Tasmania has also experienced its fair share of droughts. The last couple of years we've had really good rain but water is still something that is precious and not to be wasted. Where we live now we collect rainwater from the roof of our house and from our sheds we don't have any wells or springs on this property. So we don't waste water. At the moment, we don't have to be super careful with it because we've had so much rain and the tanks have been full to overflowing, um, but we still don't like to waste it. And it's something that we, I think, sometimes take for granted when you can just turn the tap on and water comes out. So I will share some uh, close-ups uh, later in the video so that you can see some of the stitching and the papers how they've turned out and the fabrics that I've used. I should also mention that the fabrics are linen samples. I ordered them online from a company that sells linen fabric and you could order small samples for a very low price plus postage and I've ended up using them in quite a few of my um, artworks. I've also included in this video some information about some plants that I've been putting in. I did share in my last video that I've been planting up our front garden bed with white themed plants and I found a few more uh, and so they've been put in and a few bulbs. I thought it might be too late but I found some that can be planted at this time of year and flower in summer and late summer. The weather was not good so I had to really pick my moments uh, but it was just so lovely to actually put them in. I'm also sharing in this video about an art quilt that I've been working on and which I have shared in previous videos um, but not in the last one and I'm now at the point where I'm on the next stage which is putting the next layer on so I share some of that also in this video. So I hope you enjoy what I've put together for you. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I also have a Kofi account and the link is below in the description. So uh, look forward to meeting you during this video. Thank you. I had a chance to get into the garden briefly today in between gale force winds and quite heavy rain. And it's so lovely to add, add to what I've already put in. I've put in some Solomon seal, which are just green shoots at the moment, but I will bloom white. There's the azalea that I mentioned last time. This is a new one. This is a white waratah, which I'm really thrilled to have found. I love the waratah. 
more solemn and seal. And uh, all of these are white flowering, as I mentioned. A scented plant called a Daphne, which is white too. And this one is a magnolia, which hopefully won't grow too big. It's a smaller variety and I just love magnolias. So I really hope it does well. This one I won't attempt to pronounce, but it looks like a lovely bushy plant with white flowers. And uh, this next one I did mention last time also, it's another scented plant. And I just really am looking forward to seeing this fill out and look really um, attractive at the front of our house. So here we are looking at the front of the house. The two pots at the edge of the veranda in front of the front door are actually the Japanese maples that we're going to plant out soon. the back of the house and on the left you can just see our little orchard that we've planted. Straight ahead is St Patrick's Head and then as we pan around you'll see the garden beds which are ready cleared and pruned to be planted for spring and then towards the left you'll see our native garden and Mount Elephant and this is where we have breakfast when it's fine. Here is Wellsprings number one and as you can see it's made from four small squares of linen in various colours which I felt really went together. There were other colours in the sample pack that I didn't feel suited this particular project but I, as I said I have used them for some other things. And the circles I mainly drew just using a plate and cups and glasses from the kitchen. You don't need any special templates you can just use what's around you. And you can see that some parts here are paper and they, as I mentioned, have been fused on. And there's a couple more. These two have been eco printed and I think that one. And the others have been painted with earth paints. And I do teach an online course in making your own earth paints, which I've called Grounded and uh, which I have mentioned before I'll, I'll consider opening later in the year if there's enough interest. This is entirely hand stitched. I hand stitched the pieces together. I hand stitched all the um, outlines and the texture and mostly it's just running stitch. I think I did add another stitch on the other one but this one is all running stitch as far as I can tell. The back is almost as interesting at the front. I'll just turn it over and I really like um, using Interesting fabrics on the back as well as the front. This one has some stenciled uh, silk satin on the wrong side, I think. And this is stenciled also, and I think that's linen, and also done with my earth paints. And then um, I usually put a label on the back with my name and the title and a small description and where I am and the year. And then of course a rod pocket and a rod with some fishing line so it's ready to hang up. My other Wellsprings piece is slightly different but still obviously part of the same series. And again I've used the four linen samples that I felt coordinated together, hand stitched together and then the circles and other shapes this time as well including these wavy lines added to it. And uh, again a mixture of eco printed papers here and earth painted papers here and here and I just love experimenting with different things and seeing how they will go together and I do think these are a good match. Of course you couldn't wash them but uh, normal con conservation practice for textiles is not to wash them especially if they are artworks or valuable pieces of clothing for example and there's usually um, a dry way of cleaning, not dry cleaning as such because that uses harsh chemicals, but uh, some kind of powder can be used. 
I don't know enough about it to advise anybody, um, but I wouldn't wash these because the paper would disintegrate even though it is fused to the background. And if I turn it over, you'll see the back on this one also is interesting. I've used again a piece of stenciled cloth and I think this is linen. And I also had indigo dyed it previously by using a folded shibori method. Again, I've got my label and the rod pocket with the rod in it and some fishing line. It's really nice to have these back. They've been gone for a long time, for a big part of the year actually. And you always worry a little bit, you know, that they might get lost in the post somewhere, but they have come back safely, which is really great. And I do appreciate Quilting Arts having published my work this year. shared about this piece for a while and it's time for me to start putting the layers together. As you know I have hand quilted the bottom two layers so that's this piece of cotton which has been eco printed and a piece of wool fabric which is quite thin which has also been eco printed but very faintly. Now it's time to start the second layer I'll just take that thread off which is a piece of mulberry bark. Now I'm I don't think you can see them. I'll just move this. Here are some um, chiffon silk pieces which are hand dyed but not eco dyed and I have uh, basted these on because I want them to show through the holes in my piece of mulberry bark. And this is the mulberry bark. Some people have asked me where I got this from. I actually got it from the Thread Studio in Western Australia. As you know, I'm in Tasmania. That's one state in Australia, and Western Australia is another state, but it's way over on the west part of the country. Uh, Dale Rollison runs this with her husband, Ian, and she often has some really good items that she shares with her membership group. What I did was I placed those silk pieces, silk chiffon pieces, where these holes are in the mulberry bark and so I'm going to pin this down so that it will show through the holes and do some kind of stitching around I haven't really decided yet and then on this other side I'll just move this over a little bit I'm going to put down this piece of hand dyed cotton which I also got from the thread studio and it's two pieces, so I'm going to join them together there. That'll go approximately in that position. Then this piece, which features couched strips. And now this is strips of wool that I've eco dyed. Some are from vintage wool blanket. One of them is from the edge of a blanket. It had the original stitching to which I've added my own. And some of them are seams. This is a bit of t-shirt uh, and there's a bit more further down off camera. So the background to the piece with the couching is some silk which is naturally dyed although it was green to start with. Um, it's become a bit more orange because of what I eco printed it with and the cotton, the mulberry back, the uh, other cotton behind and the wool makes quite a few layers. 
So I'll probably do quite naive stitching and the stitching will add texture so it won't be only to hold the layers together, it will be actually adding texture to this area as well. The dark pieces are because I wrapped this around rusty cans and the orangey colours are from eucalyptus leaves which grow on our property. The other things I'm going to add are this piece of silk cocoon which has been hand dyed. Again I got this from the Thread Studio and then the, other, uh, the last thing, although you can never really tell because things evolve as I go along, possibly the last thing, will be this strip. Now, I did share about this already in previous videos and I'm just going to loosely lay the strip down and then stitch it down either using some kind of couching method or some other method. So I'm just going to start pinning this down and, uh, and then in the next few days I'll start stitching it. I'm going to use quilting pins. So these are pins that have a bit of a bend in them to make it easier to go through all the layers. You can get larger ones but I find that they are quite thick, the metal is quite thick and they leave holes in the fabric. So I tend to use these smaller ones. And I usually pin from the centre outwards and this holds the layers down while you stitch it. And while I do that I will probably take these bits off and also these bits and I'll stitch the mulberry bark down before I um, add those other layers. But I just wanted you to see how it's all going to look when it's put together. I'll probably put some extra pins around the holes. I'll just move that again so you can see. So around the holes in the mulberry bark, I'll put some extra pins around them so that they stay in the place that I want them to because they are like uh, windows, the holes are like windows and that's what I want to show through. It just adds another dimension to this piece. So again going from the centre out, it's a good idea to have not too big a space in between your pins, so I generally go about a hand width. Sometimes you need to go closer if you don't want things to move. Fabric is flexible so it will move uh, even when you've pinned it really well. In the old days I used to hand baste everything together when I was doing quilts, but these pins um, have been a real uh, godsend I guess because they make it so much easier to put um, a quilt together. So even though this is an art piece it is still basically a quilt in the way it's constructed.
I'm so grateful to my customers. They support me regularly and since I've gone totally online and closed my shop front, the sales have just been improving and increasing. My Gone Rustic VIP group has expanded and I'm so grateful to everyone for their support. I try to run an ethical and sustainable business and I've been developing my YouTube channel also and I think all these things help to gain support and I thank you from the bottom of my heart.